Hey there, Commanders. This week's community goal is kind of boring, unfortunately. We've got another commodities goal where we're hauling uh, equipment around, in this case, building fabricators, skimmer components, and advanced medicines. Thankfully, these are all common commodities. A quick trip to the Inara database or EDDB will give you everything that you need to know in order to find this stuff and uh, start loading up. Uh, unfortunately, this is another situation where a fleet carrier is to your advantage, and you should probably make sure that uh, you're partnered up with one, because if you have to haul this stuff old school style, it's going to be quite a slog. Um, now, lore-wise, this community goal doesn't really do all that much. We're having a political spat that basically tracks the same way as the uh, federal community goal from last year, where uh, President Hudson was spying on everybody and uh, it just kind of pissed a whole bunch of little independent systems off and they started leaving. It's the same idea here, except that Frontier is definitely tipping the scales in favor of not starting that particular can of worms open. So what we're going to get out of this is moderate participation, and we've got 1,827 contributors so far for the heat sinks and only 463 for the other faction. So this is already pretty much set up. Um, it's expected to run for one week, but this one does end immediately if all contributions are received. Inara estimates 67% completion by the end of the week, which means that there's no big hurry if you're interested in getting this. It doesn't look like the whole community goal is going to finish out. Nor does it have to for all of the rewards to be received. You really are just going to get awarded based on how much you contribute. The top 25% bracket at time of recording sits firmly at 8,641 to 14,112 tons of total delivered commodities, which represents a rough commitment of between six to eight hours of gameplay. Um, and that's assuming you've moderately optimized, have a fleet carrier, and know what you're doing. Um, if you don't, don't, and don't, then this could take you a lot longer. So weigh your time and your resources accordingly. And also understand that this heat sink launcher is not that big of a deal to most players. And I'll show you why. This is the Ramta heat sink launcher blueprint, which it's no matter who you really go to, as long as they offer heat sink launcher ammo, it's the same blueprint. Uh, but what this does is it takes the stock heat sink launcher with three charges and gives it four charges, it increases the reload time and doubles the mass. What we're looking at getting is a heat sink launcher which will at least have a 75% ammo capacity gain and in all probability a 75% reload time increase, which will translate to five total charges instead of four. Now, I'm speculating because I don't actually know what they're going to give. At minimum, to be a meaningful reward, it would need to be better than what the current engineering blueprint is. Giving it one charge is a nice easy way to do it. Now the ideal version of this module reward is that they double the ammo capacity compared to stock and then double the reload time. And what that would mean is six charges in the heat sink launcher instead of five. The significance of that being the 5B shield cell bank, which PVPers universally uh, tout as being the best option for almost all PVP situations, especially on the back of a Fertilance. Um, has six charges available. So if you have a heat sink launcher with six available heat dumps and a shield cell bank with six available cells, that means that one heat sink launcher completely covers all of your bases, whereas right now in the current meta, PVPers have to decide between running two stock heat sink launchers with three charges each or one ammo increased heat sink launcher. Um, and then an extra shield cell bank where the other heat sink launcher would normally go for stronger shields. And in that scenario, the PVPer has to plan on hot banking his last two charges, which can be a little bit rough. The uh, blueprint that you're trying to use doesn't quite lend itself well to that. Um, you want to get through your uh, shield bank as quickly as possible, and that typically means making the bank run hotter while the uh, charge is being dumped. So a six charge heat sink launcher paired with a six bank shield cell bank means that you've got uh, a perfectly balanced module synergy that will allow pvpers to better optimize their builds and avoid taking module damage it means that pvp ships that lean on shield cell banks now have an option to make their shields even stronger um, so uh, not by much we're, we're talking a couple of hundred megajoules of absolute shield integrity 
but that gets magnified by resistances to uh, to be something pretty substantial. Enough that any PvPer who has the option to get one of these modules is going to probably go for it. That's likely what uh, a lot of the contributor pool here is, is PvPers trying to uh, go after something that will be extremely relevant to them. Everybody else, though, is going to be kind of limited. I have a couple of PvE ships that could benefit from a six-bank heatsink, but they're already optimized to use two heatsinks instead. So I don't feel like I'm losing out all that much if I don't get this particular module. And all the PvP ships that I fly are rapid shield charge um, resistance tanks right now. I don't actually have a Fertilance, so um, I, don't know, I should probably get around to building one at some point. I just I haven't got to it yet. In any case, um, the top 75% of contributors is reasonably attainable. It sits where it typically does. Um, if you can get to roughly 2,000 tons of contributions, you're in a pretty safe spot. 3,000 pretty much assures you your position for the week. Um, that's one and a half to three hours of gameplay, depending on how busy the CG system is and how far away you have to park your fleet carrier and some other little factors here and there. Uh, top 50%, you're looking at five to seven hours top 25 we're starting to pull pretty firmly away um i i would plan on playing at least an hour a night to ensure your position here if you're really well optimized you might be able to do it in less time but this is uh this, this is probably a good seven to nine hour um hard play to get a secure position you might be able to eke one out for less time and honestly, that much time for a little heatsink bobble is probably not worth it. Um, but, um, PvPers are probably only going to have one or two ships in mind where they would stick one of these on. I've got one or two PvE ships that could theoretically benefit from it. And, I'm, you know, I just... It's, yeah. You guys have got my thoughts on this. Um, all I can do at this point is ramble. Um, so that's all I've got for today. I will catch you guys later.